Thanks to my diet of tacos and Skittles, my weight constantly fluctuates, which is yet another thing I have in common with the kilogram. Hey, kilograms, which is what I call my grandma when she's looking fly, Jules here for D News. How much does a kilogram weigh? Well, it's a kilogram, right? But how do we know how much that is? Maybe a better answer is a thousand grams. See, a gram was originally defined as the mass of one cubic centimeter of water at the melting point of ice. And well, that's something we can actually measure rather than some ephemeral idea of a kilogram. So now we can say a kilogram is a thousand cubic centimeters of water at the melting point of ice. That's almost dead on accurate, but that's not how much a kilogram weighs. The real answer is that a kilogram is defined by the weight of one single object in the entire universe, le grand K, or the big K. On the outskirts of Paris, in the basement of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, is an environmentally controlled impenetrable safe in which is the official definition of the kilogram. It's called the International Prototype of the Kilogram, or IPK. It's a cylindrical piece of metal, a platinum alloy to be specific, about the size of a film canister or a golf ball. And it weighs exactly one kilogram. And there's no way that it can't, because the official metric definition of a kilogram is equal to whatever Le Grand K weighs. So if you sneak into the Pavillon de Pratoy where it's kept and shave one gram off the top, every single formerly one kilogram weight in the world will now officially be one gram heavier than a kilogram. I cannot stress this enough. The entire world's scientific understanding of what a kilogram is, is based on the exact weight of a physical object stored in a French basement. And it's been this way since 1889. Now, that's not to say that the IPK isn't a fairly reliable source. It's made up of 90% platinum and 10% iridium, making it super hard, resistant to oxidation, nearly twice as dense as lead, and not very susceptible to magnets. There are a number of exact copies all around the world to allow for comparison and calibration. Now, it's great that they're going to such lengths to make sure that nothing happens to the IPK, because if something were to happen to it, science would change, mostly in physics. Think about how often we use the kilogram and how much of physics is built on itself. Take, for example, the Newton, which is defined by the amount of force necessary to move a kilogram at one meter per second squared. Then take the Pascal, which is defined as one Newton per square meter, or one kilogram per meter per second squared. The kilogram is a base SI unit, so it affects any measurement that uses mass in kilograms. And that's a really, really bad precedent. Already, despite every precaution, the IPK is changing. Since 1889, there have only been two other verifications of its weight, once in 1948 and again in 1989. What they found is that Le Grand K has lost a petit amount of weight, roughly 50 micrograms or 50 billionths of a kilogram. Worse yet, scientists don't know why that's happening. So does this change in mass mean that now all of our calculations have to be redone? Well, of course not. But it did force the people who make those sorts of decisions, the General Conference on Weights and Measures, to try and figure out a better system of defining the kilogram than something you can accidentally drop down a storm drain. In 2011, they generally agreed to redefine the kilogram based on Planck's constant. Planck's constant is a number representing the relationship between the energy of a particle and its frequency. You don't really have to understand how that works, except that the constant never changes, and it relates to energy. That's useful, because then we can relate energy to mass thanks to Einstein's E equals mc squared equation. This means we can define mass, and therefore the kilogram, using a constant figure. But the Conference on Weights and Measures decided to postpone the decision to make that change until 2014. And in 2014, they postponed it to 2018. Which means that if you're having trouble losing weight, you still have a year or two to fly to France and stick a piece of gum on the Grand K. A heavier kilogram means a smaller you. If you've been a subscriber of DNews for a while, you might have seen some of our recent VR videos. It's a completely new way to tell stories, learn, and experience the world. And we just launched a brand new channel called Seeker VR. You can view the videos in 360 degrees from your phone or computer. Click now to watch or visit the first link in the description. And make sure you subscribe to Seeker VR. So now you know how much a kilogram really weighs. But how long is a second, really? We have a video all about that right here. Check it out. Now you're probably thinking a second is a second, right? But how did we come up with that, the exact length of a second? After all, it's an important measurement because so much depends on it. Everyone has to agree on how long a second is to accurately measure speed, frequency, and of course, time itself. 
And as it turns out, the second has gone through a few minute but important definition changes over its history. So what do you prefer, kilograms or pounds? Let us know down below in the comments and keep coming back here for more D News every day of the week.